I'm always so glad to see you because it gives me a chance to tell you how grateful I am for what you do. Well, listen, Doris, without you at the start, the Fund for Animals would not be where it is today. That first anti-fur ad you did, Real People Wear Fake Furs, the rescue has really translated into the work of the fund to the rescue of those thousands of burrows in Death Valley and the Grand Canyon the thousands of goats on San Clemente and all the other problems that we face in the animal world. And I think the rescue of dogs and cats is where it begins and that catches people and you have caught people the world over. Well, you're very nice to say that, but it seems to me that rescuing dogs and cats is just such a little thing compared to what you do. And I just, you're a comfort to me. When I heard about the burrows in such peril, I thought to myself, I know I know that Cleveland is going to be there with the Fund for Animals, and I know that they're going to take care of that problem. And I just, I relaxed and rested in that thought, and I knew that you would do it, and also with the goats, and you've done it, and the seals. Well, I think that, yeah, but in a way, taking both of what you said, without you and the spearhead that you were at the beginning, you would not have the effort, you, in a way, were just as responsible. When we rammed that pirate whaler, the kids risked their life doing that. When we went up on the ice to paint the baby seals at the low point in the ceiling thing, which has since changed around with the European countries not buying the pelts anymore. Oh, isn't and, that great. And finally, you know, the, the whole area that we have to work on so hard now is really the animals nobody loves. When you pick up a stray, it's the animals nobody loves that are out there in the street, the cat that has no hope but a shelter of getting a home. When we go after the feral goats, the feral burros, the wild horses, they fall between. They're not the ones the hunters want to shoot. They're not the ones anybody has any home for. So here they don't want to shoot them, but the answer is they would have been shot if it hadn't been for us. And that makes me very proud. Oh. You have done so much. Well, Thank you. Oh. But just the risk, I know when you stop your car in a freeway, and I've seen you do it, and get out and rescue a dog like Hobo, I know when you do a thing like that that you're risking. You're taking a personal risk. When our kids go out and rescue those goats at San Clemente among the shells, they're risking their lives. Oh. And people say, why risk your life, human life, for an animal life? And I always say to them, that whole equation, you know, is wrong. I mean, we, I say we may get to heaven and God may not be a human being. Certainly the life of God is in all of these animals. And I think how you treat what's underneath you is the mark of a civilized person. Oh, I agree with you. Well, you know I do. Well, and, you know, all of us do our own thing. I do something, you do, you do what you do. But the humane groups, are all like one. Yeah. We're not competing no, with each I, other. And I think there's been marvelous victory in that lately. I was down in Washington just a few weeks ago and was part of that, that first crack in the laboratory thing when those kids went into the National Institutes of Health and stopped that terrible funding of those viciously cruel experiments at the University of Pennsylvania where they were bashing the heads of baboons. For 15 years, they got $15 million and these kids stood there and Margaret Heckler, the Secretary of Health, suspended the funding. And I think that if we can start with the, with the, the, the seals and the boroughs and the so forth and on to the, the laboratories, the last major field that we have really oh. made no contrast in is what we're looking at out here, the horses. The wild horses that are rounded up by the thousands the Game and Fish Department, whose only answer to every problem is to shoot it. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who had a head, who said the only way to uh, count the mountain lion was to shoot it. 
Well, we're damn lucky you didn't get head of the Census Bureau, isn't it? Oh. And, and that's what we're facing in the wildlife field. It's in control of the hunters. The laboratory was in the control of the researchers. They right. were judge and jury. The wildlife field is in control of the hunters and trappers and poisoners, and they are judge and jury. And I'm glad that a group like ours that started small with one celebrity, Doris Day. Oh, no. Cleveland, you're fantastic. You really are. I wish the people, you see, the people don't really know what's going on. It's the truth. Most people don't know what's going on. I think it is true. And I think they think that, you know, when they see by the side of the road, they see uh, animal hospital. And then they make a joke and say they care more about the, uh, the animals here than they do about the people. You take a dog that you've rescued into that animal hospital, if you haven't got $50 cash, the guy may not look at it. You better you believe know that. that. Oh, do I know it. I know it. But that, well, look, we're going to save the animals. I think they're here for a reason. God put them here, and we have to protect them. We really do. We're on, the two-leggers have to protect the four-leggers. That's right. That's right. Again, the mark of a civilized person, why you treat what's underneath you, because man has an infinite capacity to rationalize his cruelty. Oh, I have to shoot them because there's so many of them. Uh, they say that... Well, I have to do that. It's a sport. Yeah. And I'm yeah. my father before me yeah. was a hunter. And, and it's the way I can be something beside a number in the office or some. Well, it's not the way. Look at that animal looking. What chance has it got? What does a wild animal want? It wants a drink of water. It doesn't e eat drugs and stuff like that, although they give them to them in the laboratory. Yeah, right. You know, what does it want? A drink of water and a little place to run. And yet man has to for his vanity, for his sport, go in, shoot, trap, and poison. I know it. I know it. And they're the purest things on this earth. Well, I think... Don't you agree? Absolutely. Oh, children, I, yeah. babies, children, and animals. And I really believe that you can go to any animal with affection, and that animal will turn into a pet. And I think that if we went at animals in a different way, we'd have the most wonderful world. I mean, it would be really like the a peaceable kingdom and everything you see and we could learn from that how to get along with our own tempers and our thing. I always felt if the United Nations would work a little harder on the world animal problems they'd have a little better success with people. Cleveland, tell me about your Black Beauty Ranch. Well, when I was a boy I read the book Black Beauty about the terrible trials of that horse that ended up at a wonderful ranch for life and my dream had always been to have a ranch where the abused horses, mules, burros, goats, and so forth could be and could live out their life, could be adopted too. But to me, we couldn't have done any of this rescues that we've done without the spillover that ba Black Beauty allows, and it's my dream. Oh, isn't that neat? You know, our Steve Reed is there at this very moment. Oh, that's nice. We're going to see it, and we'll be right back. Well, here I am standing in front of the Black Beauty Ranch on an old country road in Ben Wheeler, Texas. Hi, Doris, and hi, everybody. And as you're about to see today, this is not your ordinary ranch. Let's take a look. It's a beautiful sight to see, isn't it? particularly when you realize that all these wild horses, burros, and goats were nearly slaughtered in so-called animal management programs. Well, now they roam freely and safely at the Fun for Animals Black Beauty Ranch. The 350-acre ranch serves as an adoption center for the animals brought here through the Fun's daring rescue operations. The Grand Canyon Project, thought to be impossible, was one of the hardest animal rescues in history. It saved 580 burrows from extermination by the park services had the rescue failed. Several thousand more burrows and horses were spared destruction at the China Lake Naval Weapons Station in California. Again, the fund reached an agreement with the Navy and moved aggressively to airlift hundreds of goats from an island off San Diego. Billy Jack Saxon, now manager, has been with the Black Beauty Ranch for seven years. The farms for animals couldn't carry on without this refuge. With her rescuing of the wild burros and wild horses because they have to have a place to bring them to when they rescue them. Mm -hmm. And we take them here and give them their shots and uh, warm them, get them in top condition, and we ship them out to the other adoption centers. In addition to adoption of burros and horses, the ranch also serves as a refuge for mistreated animals. 
Some of them has been used real bad. We have uh, more problems with the feeding around in this part of the country, starved to death animals. Billy told me the tragic story about Cody, a horse shot in the leg by his owner, then left to stand with no medical care for 23 days. A group of concerned ladies then purchased the horse and kept it for a few weeks before calling the fund for animals. They didn't have no place to go with the horse after they got him where he could go. So they called us and we paid the vet bill and gave Cody a home. And then there's Nim, a 10-year-old chimp. He'd been part of an educational project in California, but was transferred to a university for laboratory research when he started becoming vicious. Nim was to be part of experiments that would let him live only another three years. Now, well, he'll live another 50 years at the Black Beauty Ranch. Does he use dental floss, you know? No, I never have yeah. given no dental floss. He probably uses it if I get to. <laughs> Whether it's caring for a chimp like Nim, or of the many wild burrows on the ranch, Billy has seen his loving attention make a difference in the animals. Because they was wild one step on a time, and they, I can walk right amongst them around, so I haven't abused them, that's for sure. What does it do to you, being around all these animals? Well, not everything I love is out here on, around this ranch, you know. I just love it here. This is my life. I always loved animals. What a beautiful thing this is. Tell me about this baby. Oh, yeah. He'll tell you himself. This is Lady Jane Doe, and she's one of the San Clemente goats. Five, 5,000 of them we got off the island and home. This you belonged. saved. Tell him you make a good pet. It's very tell important. Him. That's yes, right. You make that, good pets. It's precious. I love it, and I love you for coming to see me. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's I just wonderful. love you for doing this show. You always have so much to tell us, you know? And I, I really appreciate that. I love seeing you. Thanks so much. Say, Say bye bye. Bye bye, folks.